I will get some lead. Lead comes in a multitude of sizes. I like the small size only because I like the small size. I have spools of this at home. I mean, 10 pound spools, so it's it's not a big deal. God, are we talking again? Same guy. I noticed that. An attorney to, to boot. There's multiple ways of wait, waiting a hook. You can use beads. You can use lead. You can use nothing and tie weights to the leader. I do all, the, all of that except bead heads. I don't tie bead heads. And the reason is I carry beads in my vest. If I need a little bit more weight to get a fly down that a bead head would be appropriate for, or I need a bead head for the, the color attraction of a fly, then I put a bead on my leader and tie the nymph to it, and the bead tracks right down to the fly while you cast. You got a bead head. I therefore don't have to catch or cast and tie too many different flies. It's always the same. So Rikophilidae is a green rockworm, and we have them in Chittenango Creek. What I'm doing is dressing the fly and attaching the weight to the fly so it doesn't get lost. We're going to tie a green fly with a rib of this material, which is just a hurl, whether it be ostrich hurl or peacock hurl, doesn't matter. It's a hurl of some sort. And peacock hurl or ostrich hurl is very, very weak. If you try twisting this together or tying it on, it'll break. I guarantee you that. So what I do is tie the, the um, ostrich hurl, the peacock hurl or ostrich hurl to the shank of the hook. By the way, if I was using cement to tie flies, I would be applying cement to the heat, to the lead wrap and to the base of this. And putting just some cement over the shank of the hook so it gets tacky. And I don't mean that the fly is tacky. I mean that everything is tacky. Nice try, though. I double the, the, length, the length of the fly line, or the tying feathers, tying, I'm coming up with these rare, rare words today, tying thread, and I tie everything in at one point. And now I've got the basics for a chenille here. I've got the cotton thread, and the material that I make the machine out of, ready to go. What I've got is ran floss, single strand, or I've got some three strands, if you really want to go nuts. Three strand is a, strand is a problem. I tie this in, and then I wrap it up, wrap it forward. making it not thin, but rather thick in floss. Now, winter's a tough time to tie these flies because of the thickness of, the, of your fingers and the roughness of your fingers versus the floss. Yes, I am pulling hard. Two wraps will teach you, will hold anything, including errantly placed floss. Now, I've left on the front of this fly enough room to say that there is a taper to the body, more to the, to the rear than the front but there's room for the head on the fly. 
always, always, always leave room for the head. And believe it or not, I cannot see these little rough pieces of rayon floss. The background here just makes it impossible to see. Here's the first one broken. Piece of floss or uh, hurl broke. So I just get it out of the way because it really doesn't matter. A little tag of hurl. And for some reason, fish like hurl. I don't know why, but peacock hurl is one of those things that it, they, it just makes everything look fishy. So it's okay if we have a little bit extra or there's all of the hurl broken. So we're going to go back and tie on new hurl and thread. New hurl anyway. If anyone here feels that nobody makes a mistake when they're a professional or a good fly tire, they're wrong. That with you. That's right. I show every error that is possible right here. That's deliberate. Like last time when you broke the thread like 30 times. Actually, that was a broken um, ceramic insert. I've got it home and I haven't fixed it yet. But I did break the thread three times in a row on a broken ceramic insert. How do you fix that, though? Throw it away and do it over again. I, really, there's no way to fix the in, it. The insert? Yeah. You give it to your good friend. Right. Seuss, do you need another bomb? I, <laughs> I was thinking of Jeff, but it, it comes into effect the same way. So you could give it to Jeff. Jeff is the guide that we know on Cape Cod. He's coming up here to fish the little uh, Delaware River shortly. And I said, Jeff, it's zero out. Doesn't matter. My wife is home. Okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, Carlo is on the other line. Okay, we've got a rib. Now, what I'm going to do if I find any hackle here is tie some legs in with soft tackles. Dick, can I ask you a question? Please. When you tie the hurl on, uh, sometimes what I have done is leave my thread on the end by the hook and then wrap my thread over the hurl afterwards. Only Perfect. Because I find that a lot of times when the trout hit that, the bird, teeth they, tend cut to, it. they tend to cut it, whether it's peacock or officer, even when I use uh, the, the male turkey tail, you know, they uh, cut I use it. That sometimes it just, just a hit, and you know, you've it, it lost the whole fly sometimes. If you really look at a brown or a rainbow's mouth, or a brook trout for that matter, and open the mouth gently and look, there are small teeth in there. Trout has them, uh, brown trout has them up the, the vomer bone, up the middle of the, the throat, and down below. So it can really catch. So can a rainbow and a brookie. They can really catch something. So in fact, it's perfect. You don't, you, I mean, I suppose you risk kind of squashing the, mm -hmm. perhaps the pearl down a little bit, but I don't know. But if you dance your thread back and forth as you come forward, yeah, you, okay. you, are, you eradicate that problem. How about entwining it with the... That's what I was just showing here, to make a chenille, yeah. With and yet it broke thread. repeatedly for me. With, with the fine thread, so. <clears throat> the, when are you going to get rid of the piece of tying thread, the extra piece that goes up and goes forward before you put your hurl body on? So unless you double the, the length of the, the tying thread and then cut it off, yeah. yeah, that's what I've done. That's what I did before you were here. So, yes, you are correct. It was, a long time ago. 
I'm only going to put enough. You don't have to worry about it. Like I said, if you catch one per fly, you'll have more fish than you can eat. Sue, some of us don't kill fish. But you know, if you're a farm boy, <laughs> I am. The difference is we had to clean and cook everything we killed ourselves. <laughs> Didn't want to do that. Your mother and father had a good plan. They did. I tied early to give my father a little more time to or to fly fish. Notice I'm doing this without magnification. It's a surgeon saying, notice I did that surgery without magnification? What I have here is a green rockworm. They're a caddisfly pupa that live on the bottom of our creek right here. They crawl around the surface of the rocks. They are, they're a free living insect. So it doesn't live under the water, doesn't make a net. Uh, it only makes a, a covering for itself when it pupates and that only takes a few days. So it will crawl from the fast, wa faster water to the slow water to pupate. But if you walk, walked out there right now, you'd probably find some, ra some Rhychophilidae insect larvae right in the slower water. Because in the, in the slow water in the winter, it has an oxygen content that's very high. In the, in the summer, maybe you want to push it a little bit more towards the, the faster water. But in the gravel bits, if you fish this insect, down on the bottom and just rolling along, try to pick it up. What size are you using? I'm using a, four, a 10 dry fly hook here. Um, the reason is the 10 length is correct, but I don't want the heaviness of the, the hook shank because you can, fly, you can fish this in any water column. And sometimes you want it towards the surface. They come in a variety of sizes. I know for Certain species, they do. You would tie from an 18 all the way up to a 10 to accommodate different. Uh, it it only lasts year. one year before it, it pupates, but it grows at a different rate. Right. So a 10 is probably borderline mature. So it's it's when the trout season is on here. Um, it is a, a single uh, lifespan per year not multiple breeds like uh, Isonychia or, or uh, Trichos. But it is very effective. And you, again, you could weigh the, the weight, the shank, and I put a small amount of lead on the shank just to demonstrate that. You could tie it as a bead head. You could tie it naked with no weight at all and weight the leader. And that's what I tend to do. A lot of fans just use a dummy, right? Yeah. 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 Little brown is hydrocyte, but or more than than Rhychophilidae. But it's the same basic insect, and we're not going to tie hydrocyte because it's the Rhychophilidae is so easy.